These ammos were freely available on level 4 traders last wipe, but now they are much harder to get. Today, we're going through the entire ammo progression for patch 15, because so much has changed with the introduction of ammo flipping and the new trader ref amongst others than the last time I made this type of video. Let's start by quickly going through the level 1 to level 13 ammos before the flea and any level 2 traders because Peacekeeper 2 technically can start at level 14 and in here you are so restricted now to anything that is decent it makes it quite difficult to choose. Almost everything here is very bad on penetration and mediocre on damage as well so I think that you should try to either get the highest pen that you're able to within a particular calibre to stand a chance of getting through some armour eventually or in some specific cases going for pure damage and give up on pen entirely for example with shotguns. Often you don't even have the choice to pick high damage so what I've done is to find the highest pen that you can access for each calibre and chosen my top 5 based on the ammo itself and the guns that you're most likely to be able to get because although some of these bullets are actually okay, many of the guns you're not able to buy or consistently find anywhere such as the Desert Eagle. SPBT for 762x54R is by far the best bullet that you can buy from the traders outright, but as it only goes into the Mosin at this point, you'll have to be comfortable with using bolt actions and clearly the rate of fire is a bit of an issue too, especially if you don't hit the head and players are wearing class 4 and up. 366 TKM FMJ isn't too bad all things considered and is most often used in a VPO 215 bolt action as well which has a faster cycle time than the Mosin so it is slightly easier to use in closer fights. However you can also use this in the VPO 209 the 366 version of the AK platform for semi-auto which to me is a little bit more usable with 98 damage it really packs a punch when hitting unarmored parts. 762 by 39 SP is the next one down compatible with the AKM series or the semi-auto VPO 136. Useful because you can utilise T45M and PS found in raid to supplement your ammo as you go. This wipe has a much greater emphasis on finding ammunition in raids themselves which has been interesting and is some of the reason why ammo is so limited on the traders so make sure that you're checking your scavs to stock up on stuff that you can't buy yet. For the 545 rifles such as the AK-74M or the AKS-74U line the best that you can get here on Prapor is US rounds with 17 pen. This isn't great at all, but the ammo is again plentiful in raid for this calibre, both on scavs as well as loose spawns, so you can often upgrade in raid to at least PS with 28 pen or even something better. Be on the lookout for PP, BT, BP and BS boxes as all of these have much better pen stats than that which you can buy at the beginning. Of the SMG ammo, it all sucks frankly so you're best off using the cheapest and most plentiful with the lowest recoil that you can get due to having to hit the head of players that you encounter to win. In that case, it doesn't really matter what you get. I picked RG208 here with 13 pen for 9x18 but any will do to be honest as they all kill in one bullet to the eyes but this one has pretty good damage as well and it won't bounce off level 1 glasses such as the Condor like some of the others will. As I said before, a shout out to the Buckshot. It doesn't really matter which one you use between 525, 7mm or Express and if you get your hands on a semi-auto shotgun such as a Saiga 12, an MP155 or an MP153 you can load it up with whatever and shoot for legs in close quarters. This will take down even geared PMCs really fast due to the total damage output being extremely high on these shotguns and there not being any leg armour. Now, here, Fence does deserve a quick note as well. You can often find ammo that punches well above level 1 traders on him. Check Fence first before you commit to a gun, as the choice here is inconsistent, but it can be a significant power boost before you get to the flea. This is especially true if you are starting the wipe late or just haven't had enough time to play much yet. The common ammos to look for are 556M855, 545PS, 762PS or T45M, and BCP FMJ for 762 NATO. Now that the ammo stats are in the game, it's a million times easier for less experienced players to figure out what is decent. If you're under level 15 and checking fence, just look for anything with 30 or more pen and that is usually a good start. Do a linked search on the ammo to see what weapons it goes with and that will give you a good idea of what you might be able to do. So next in terms of progression is Workbench Level 1. You need to get nuts and bolts to make this but don't forget that you could buy the multi-tool from Mechanic 1 directly. There's not that much on here of use but PMM PSTM with 24 pen is better than any SMG ammo that you can purchase at this stage but be mindful that this only works with the Klin and not the Kedda due to its higher power. SP8 is maybe an interesting one, this is another Kedda Klin ammo but with a higher damage of 67 so it gives you a better chance of legging people but it does have zero pen so any armour at all will absorb it. The next one here is Piranha. I actually think this one is rather powerful. The special thing about Piranha is the same as its bigger brother Flechette, which is that the armour damage that it does is pretty high. While only 24 pen as a headline stat, remember that it fires 10 projectiles at a time and each one gets calculated independently, so this smashes armour durability way faster than you would expect and it can certainly punch above its pen level to a far greater extent than the number itself would indicate. 
The only problem here is that at this stage it needs an empty metal fuel can to make it, which is kind of hard to get hold of early. These can be picked up from the fleet later, but by then you can get better ammunition or buy Piranha itself directly. 7.62x39 FMJ is better than the SP that you'd get from Skier, but I personally would rather loot PS and T46M in raid or get them from fence rather than spend time doing craft. So you've finally gotten to level 15 and Tarkov has suddenly opened out with access to the flea market. This wipe you're now able to fully participate in the mid game immediately by using the flea to grab ammo up to 41 penetration and with the ability to relist ammo from the traders often you can access up to tier 4 trader ammo this way without even getting any of them to level 2. These are more or less expensive depending on the demand for that particular cartridge and the trader's initial price as well, so here are my favourite ones to look out for. Within 9mm, this ranges from PST with 20 pen, AP6.3 with 30 pen and PVP with 39 pen. AP6.3 is much more cost effective than PVP, but it won't go through class 4 helmets, which can be a bit of a problem sometimes. Stacking ammo can be a good way to get around this, using the bad rounds at the bottom of a mag and the good rounds at the top. In this instance, say you're using an MP5, maybe you use 10, 10 and 10, with PST, 6.3 and PVP stacked on top of each other. Whatever your wallet will allow really, and it's a trade-off between economy and dying with those expensive bullets on your PMC unused. For 45 ACP, you can get the AP rounds here, which is an insane bullet, with 38 pen and 66 damage this makes it extremely good. This is completely bonkers in something like the Vector but as a low level player you can use it to great effect in the UMP. For 556 you can get all the way from M855 with 30 pen to Sost with 33 pen and M856A1 this last one of which is definitely a solid ammo for PvP. I typically consider 37 pen the start of serious ammo for fighting against players as it gives you half a chance to get a headshot even through something like a ULAC at closest range whereas anything lower than that just tends to bounce off. 556 weapons are also pretty cheap on the flea market. My preference is normally the G36C these days, but you can't always buy one of these without Peacekeeper 2, and the long ones aren't that amazing, so look for the 556 MDR and maybe the 556 Scar instead if necessary, as these don't need much modding to be half decent. Likewise, for 545, you can get the equivalents to 556 being PS with 28 pen, PP with 34 pen, and BT with 37 pen. Although these are cheaper to mod, they usually do need some work, whereas weapons like the MDR are pretty much good to go out of the box. So, in the end, it just comes down to user preference of which one you want to use. Moving up to 7.62x39, this is one of my favourite calibers this wipe due to its great ammo selection on the flea market. T45M and PS that we spoke about earlier on fence have 30 and 35 pen respectively and are pretty cheap, and you can even get the one step higher 7.62PP on the flea as well. This is one of the most powerful cartridges that you can get access to as it just sneaks into the sub 42 pen threshold. When combined with the cheap modding of the AKM or the AK-104 and 3 platforms, this can make some of the earliest weapons with very solid performance possible. I have a whole video about the 104 over here if you're interested. I do want to briefly mention the 7.62x54R calibre for those DMR enjoyers as the SVD can be bought from the fleet as well alongside either T46M or LPS. Both of these have over 40 pen and are very solid. Given the slightly more complex access to M80 these days, this can give an option for medium distance sniping very early on in progression. Remember that in theory you can just add the barrel mount and grab a bipod, which negates the need to mod it at all if you're playing carefully and passively. Moving up to the level 2 traders, we start with Peacekeeper 2 at level 14. This is technically pre-flea, but typically you'll get him at level 15 because he costs quite a bit of money to level him up. Here you get access to 45 match FMJ, which is useful to stack with AP from the flea for a UMP or the vector as we saw earlier. The others aren't really worth it on him, as you can buy better ammo for the P90 and the 556 weapons directly on the flea market. This is kind of the reoccurring theme with the traders this wipe. Once you reach level 15, a lot of the ammo on them is basically redundant as better cartridges can be bought for low prices on the market instead. The main one now that is actually useful is potentially SP5, as there are some early weapons that are cheap and use this ammo, such as the suppressed VSK, which at 2810 isn't half bad, especially when stacked with SPP over the top from the flip. The BT barter here for two shonkers used to be clutch, but with this trading at about 500 per bullet on the flea market as well, much of the time it's cheaper to buy outright. TCW from Skier for 762 NATO isn't terrible, but again, I think I'd rather just buy BCP FMJ from the flea market for the extra pen if you're using something early like an RFB. From Jaeger 2, you can now get Piranha directly for the 12 gauge shotguns, which is often a bit cheaper than the flea market, but not by that much. Mechanic 2 only has Subsonic for the MP7 and 50 Action Express Copper Solid for the Desert Eagle, neither of which are too useful at this point. 
So moving on to the level two workbench after mechanic two, you can make a few useful things in here, but the problem that we keep coming back to is that typically all the ammo is available on the fleet for a 20% premium to the trade of price. Even LPS, which is the most expensive ammo on this level of the workbench because it isn't available on the traders at all, it's only 1,100 per bullet on the market, meaning that crafting 70 for four hours typically just isn't worth it. You're better off doing other things here like crafting green gunpowder and selling that and then buying the LPS off the fleet with change to spare, but they're here if you want them. So up to level three traders and we start to get access to a few more interesting things cheaper than the flea. On Peacekeeper we can grab L191 and AP6.3 directly, the latter of which is usually marked up quite a bit on the flea. I think the $2 price tag puts people off flipping it for much less than this, not realising that it's actually only $1.71 per bullet, which only equates to 256 rubles, whereas on the flea it's normally 400 plus. M855 and 545 PS are not as inflated, but these unlock here too at the level 3 traders, and as a baseline, you can stack better rounds over the top of them if you want to. Crapport does have some more niche bullets that tend to be flipped a little bit less, such as 7U4 for the SR2M, although this only has 27 pens, so you're generally better off either moving up in the calibre or going with something like L191 for the P90. T46M for 7.62x54R and SPP for 9x39 are pretty good for their respective calibres, but often there's little advantage here over the flea prices either. One interesting one that isn't on the flea is the Zvezda Flash purchase on Prapple 3 if you're a bear, but you need to complete our own land first. This one is useful for doing the kill PMCs while they're flashed quest, and the USEC equivalent that we'll see later is on Peacekeeper 4, so it's a bit easier to get access to as a bear. All Skier has at level 3 is 300 Blackout BCP FMJ, but Jaeger has a couple of good ones including BCP FMJ for 7.62 NATO. This is another one that is marked up quite a bit because of the issues with M80 access due to either ref requirements or lighthouse tasking, and you can also get a bunch of shotgun stuff from him depending on what you like to do. There's Flechette for point blank armour destruction, BMG slugs for long range plinking, or Magnum Buck for roll the dice headshots and leg meta. Our final trader on tier 3 is Mechanic, who's a bit light on inventory too, with JSP for the MP7 at 32 pen and 50 Action Express FMJ with 40 pen, which is the best cartridge for the Desert Eagle and actually makes it half decent. At level 3, it starts to make sense to discuss Rare. Prior to this, his ammo isn't actually that useful, and even here, 9x21BT, SOST, and 545PP are all available elsewhere. But the boxes of M80 can't be accessed for a while without him, unlocking that range of weapons that previously could only get 35 pen BCP FMJ. I'd say that the strongest weapon to use with it at this stage in the progression is probably the SR25, as you can mod this fairly easily given its compatibility with the M4 in many ways, and the base gun is back on the flea market this way, making it much more cost effective to get started. So with Mechanic 3, it's time to unlock Workbench 3. While there are a bunch of crafts here that you can just buy elsewhere, making them ultimately pointless to do here too, we finally get to some ammos that you can't simply buy for rubles, which is where the real value comes in. We can again get the Zvezda KS-23 flash shells from here as a start, meaning that you don't actually have to do the tasks to unlock it, but all the others that are worth doing are gated behind quests. AP-20 slugs after the quest Outcasts is here, useful if you're a medium range shotgun main, as well as 366 APM after Tarkov Shooter 3, a fearsome round that I've talked about a lot on the channel generally over the years. Because it's banned off the flea market now, it's so much more rare to see in raid, but it's still great in the budget VPO215 despite some accuracy concerns over the better sniper rifles, in part because it's one of the few bullets that will one-tap lightly armoured chests. 9x39 PAB9 with 43 pen is a pretty serious bullet for the VSS, Val and the new to this wipe SR3M, given the 900 RPM fire rate on these guns. You may notice that many of these crafts have been dramatically reduced in time, and this one takes 2 hours minus the bonuses from your crafting skill, so making 150 at a time here is actually feasible to use properly. M855A1 is still here on Workbench 3 with 44 pen after your car needs a service, a bit of a painful quest but nonetheless worth doing for the staple PvP bullet for 556 weapons. 762 NATO M62 is still possible to get, but given it's been removed from Peacekeeper 4, it effectively took the place of the old M61 craft here in the Workbench, requiring Wet Job 6 to be completed first. This is another just under 2 hour craft and it now gives 200, which is fairly generous. Now, 545BP with its 45 pen is effectively the AK-74 equivalent to M855A1, but the quest required for this is insanely annoying. District Patrol requires you to go through all of the painful kill stuff in specific area quests on streets, starting with pistols in the Klimov Trading Center, then onto the cinema, and finally 30 entities at the Cardinal Apartments. Very few people unlock these because of the difficulty in simply finding things to kill around those areas, but it's technically here for those with extreme patience and stamina. 
The last most powerful bullet on Workbench 3 is 762 by 54 rbt previously purchasable on Prapple 4 but now behind Tarkov Shooter 7 and available only to craft. With 55 pen, it will effectively carve through all but the strongest armors in the game in two shots. You only get 50 after two and a half hours, but given the weapons that fire it are primarily semi-auto or bolt actions, with the exception of the PKP, the PKM and the AVT, you tend not to go through it that quickly. So moving on to that upper echelon of traders at level 4, we finally get access to a bunch of these ammos that previously were only available on the flea market before. M856A1 in particular tends to be much cheaper on Peacekeeper than on the flea, with the others varying and typically holding a small discount. A few particularly notable cartridges here are 300 Blackout CBJ with 43 pen for the MCX that can't be bought previously as it's over the cutoff for the flea market and can be very powerful if you don't have access to M855A1 yet for the M4. M80 is also available here after completing Lighthouse Revision, very useful for those without Ref Level 3 or Arena at all. Over on Prapor, we can grab 545BT directly as well as 7M42 and 762PP. The only two not available elsewhere are 762 by 54 rp S, which you can get after Punisher Part 6 with the SVD, ironically the quest that you probably want it for the most, and PS12B for the Ash 12 which hits super hard. Skier has the other Zvezda flash purchase for USEX after finishing Counter Action, and the last direct trader purchase comes from Mechanic 4 after the task import, unlocking FMJ SX for the MP7, which is very good due to the adequate pen of 40, low recoil, high fire rate, and decently sized 40 rounders for this gun. The final regular trader is Ref 4. There are four ammos here, two useful and two less so, being 45 AP and PS12 B, which are both purchasable for rubles elsewhere, so don't waste the GP coins, and SP6 and 762 BP, which are both task locked. SB6 at least can technically be purchased on Prapor, but this one takes the high level task of capturing outpost, so most players will probably get it from Ref instead. The other one, 762BP, is relatively easy to unlock, requiring level 45, Punisher to be finished, and the next task, Intimidator, which only involves scab headshots, but it stops you from having to craft this in the workbench. 762BP is a very strong bullet, especially now that class 6 is much harder to come by. Previously, it wasn't worth using this with the availability of 762NATO M62 and SIG Hybrid for the spear, but as these are hard to get as well now, it makes much more sense to take a second look at the endgame guns for this calibre, namely the Mutant and the RD704. Speaking of SIG Hybrid, there are a few ammos remaining that are locked behind special tasks, just like SP6 and 762BP. One of these is 545-7N40, a solid bullet at 42 pen that reduces recoil and unlocks after the completion of calibration, eliminating 20 PMCs over 100 meters away. After doing the guide from Peacekeeper, you get access to APSX for the MP7, the single highest pen cartridge in the game for SMGs at 53. This is a double-edged sword because it's also the lowest damage too. This means that you'd better hit your shots on the thorax or head, otherwise you'll lose a slugging match with higher damage bullets. The guide follows on to another task called the cleaner, killing 40 raiders on reserve. This is difficult because of just getting them to spawn consistently, but if you do complete it, you get the craft for 300 blackout AP, a very strong bullet for the MCX with 48 pen that is close to 762 BP in performance. Finally, we have SIG Hybrid itself, arguably the most powerful cartridge in Tarkov when taken into account with the weapon that it pairs with, the SIG Spear, which is an insane gun with the same fire rate as the M4 and recoil similarly decent but hitting harder than 762 BP with a equivalent pen of 47. This is why, after being all over the place last wipe, the SIG Spear and the best ammo SIG Hybrid has been locked behind Lightkeeper's 10th proper task, Trouble in the Big City. This means that very few players will be using it this wipe, as even getting to Lightkeeper takes some doing, and a few of the tasks along the way are incredibly laborious to complete, such as PMC kills around the Woods Mountain. Overall, the best fleet ammos are probably M856A1 and 545BT, 762PP and a whole bunch of top-end SMG ammo, such as 9x19 PvP, SS190 for the P90, 45 AP for the Vector, and FMJ SX for the MP7. From level 4 traders but no quests, CBJ for the MCX is particularly strong, as is the niche but decent PS12 beat for the Ash 12, and for overall progression to performance, it's likely worth targeting 762BP and M855A1 from the workbench. With SP6 on ref as well, you have plenty of choice of endgame weapons and cartridges to go with them. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.